Hello and welcome to Nights at the Game Table. We're at Pat's Games here in Austin, Texas. I'm Kevin. I'm Aria. And tonight we're going to be talking about how to build your perfect deck using the internet. To keep up to date with everything at Knights at the Game Table, all you have to do is click subscribe and then hit that tiny little notification button next to it so every time we upload a new video, YouTube will be sure to let you know. Obviously, the first thing you should do is join our chat group on Facebook, Game Talk for Gamers. But Ari, after that, what's your number one choice? Um, number one, definitely look at recent tournament results. Uh, so, especially in a format like Standard where it changes week to week, you want to be looking at the tournament results that came out from the previous weekend, if possible. Um, to me, I think the most reliable source is actually from Grand Prix results uh, and or Pro Tour results. You can definitely look at Magic Online results as well and for other events like Star City. But I find that those events, they don't, the deck lists that rise to the top aren't always necessarily the best. Whereas for a big event with professional players um, like Grand Prix and Pro Tours, those decks are usually going to be a little bit more tested. And that's going to give you a good idea of the range of cards that are probably most powerful and standard right now, right? Yeah, I mean, it, one thing to look for that's really helpful, I think, is not only looking at what decks are being played, but like you said, which cards are being played. So if you see like Assassin's Trophy, for example, as a card that's being played in like five or six different decks that all made top 32, mm -hmm. uh, that's you know a good hint that that should be one of the cornerstones of any deck I want to build, right? Um, because even if there's different shells for the card, the card itself is so powerful, it's getting played you know, all over the place. Awesome. What about people who are looking to build around a specific card that they like, or maybe enhance their index? Well, um, the biggest thing, I think, in terms of if you want to build around a particular rare, um, look at what mana bases are being played currently in standard, for example. Uh -huh. um, if you have like a three color dinosaur from Ixalan and you notice you don't have all the dual lands yet, then now may not be the time. <laughs> but if you notice, like for example, like we saw recently, there are a lot of um, Golgari decks, there's a lot of Demir decks, like the, you know, and the combination of those two guilds. You know, if you have cards that you really want to play that are in those color combinations, you can actually look online for some mana bases for those colors that people have already built, and you can start from there. That way, you're not starting from uh, scratch. Nice. Now, let's say people want to look at uh, specific card texts. There's a uh, Stryfall, and then there's uh, Wizards' official site Gatherer. Um, what sorts of phrases and things might you search for when you're building certain decks? Well, uh, with Gatherer in particular, which I use kind of often, the one thing I immediately do when I go to that website is I click this tab that says Advanced uh, to go for the advanced search. Often when you're looking for a specific cards or a specific format, just typing it into the main search bar is not going to get you there because you're going to come up with like cards that were released in 1993 that are less helpful for standard. <laughs> so I will go to that advanced tab, and then I'll start actually searching inside a particular color. So I'll say, OK, I want to build like a green-black deck. I'm going to search for all green and black creatures that cost between one and four mana. Right? That's going to be probably what I'm looking for for a constructed green-black deck. Nice. Um, and then uh, if there's a new set that's coming out, where would you look for something like that? Um, there's a lot of different spoiler sites. I think Mythic Spoiler has shown that they are pretty good at updating things day by day. So uh -huh. every single day there's brand new cards up there and they're updated consistently. And also I think they have a great format where they keep it all on one page. There's other places you find spoilers where you have to click through a lot of different pages to get the different colors or different mana costs. I, I think Mythic Spoiler is, yeah, they're, they're the gold standard in, in spoiler. Nice. So when you have got a brand new card or some cards from a spoiler site and you're excited about building something from a new set, um, what are the key things you're looking for to go with them and around them? Well, um, definitely what I, what I actually do is I go to usually Mythic Spoiler and I pull up the full sets of every other set that's uh, legal and standard. So then I have every single card in the format, and I can just kind of scroll through and look at them. Another way to do it is to use like the gatherer search engine or some other way. But for me, as uh, somebody building decks, especially trying to build them for a competitive environment, I think it really helps to know every single card that's in the format. Because sometimes you'll see something that you know, wasn't getting played before rotation, you know, might have mostly been a limited card or didn't quite fit in. And you're like, oh, that's still legal. <laughs> you're like, wait, I can play that now? And it does happen sometimes where these older cards that were sort of overshadowed in the past start becoming a lot more relevant. Mm -hmm. And uh, what specifically might you be hoping to find? 
Um, the biggest thing is removal spells, definitely. Um, trying to see if there's any playable constructed removal spells that um, before weren't getting played as much. Um, like, for example, right now, I think like Cast Down is a good example where you might see it in some, some small numbers in the past, but Fatal Push just said, you know what, you don't need to play Cast Down. Now that Fatal Push is gone, you, you start looking at what's in standard, you know, you might have to play three Cast Down in your control deck. I mean, it's a two mana, what we call Doom Blade, for those of us the old school players. Mm -hmm. You know, two mana kill almost everything. So stuff like that, um, those kind of details, are fine details of like specific removal spells at a particular cost or maybe looking at a creature where, okay, I need more one-drops in my Boros deck. Do they print any one-drops back in Ixalan that might be helpful to me now? Uh, looks, looking through those kind of things, um, looking for those, those pieces that may have been overlooked, that's definitely a good thing. That is do. solid advice for competitive play. Uh, and for people that are looking to uh, do something a bit more casual, build around specific cards, uh, what kind of keywords might you search for, um, you know, if you're looking for interactions with specific cards and so on? Uh, well, definitely uh, most of your cards are going to either want to deal with like the graveyard or they're going to want to count cards in hand or they're going to deal with things in play. So you start looking at other cards that have those keywords in them. So like one thing you can do on some of the sites where you can search is you can like search the word graveyard. And now you can see every card in standard that deals with the graveyard. Something like that might be helpful if we're trying to build around a rare that cares about cards and graveyards. You can also do um, phrase searches. I remember searching for like into the battlefield if I want things that have specific triggers like that, which could also be helpful. Yeah, you definitely can. Um, you can kind of get a little bit more creative with those. But for me, I, I like to sort of get the big picture. And sometimes if, you search, if your search terms become too specific, it can actually sort of backfire on you a little you bit miss something. because you can miss something exactly like because you're thinking like okay I want to get a comes into play ability but you don't realize there's this perfect card that came out last year doesn't have a come into play ability it has a static ability but it's what you want something to watch out for so when you get around to actually throwing your cards together and assembling your deck um, the sites like mana stack and tapped out that you can use to uh, manipulate the cards and pull them in together how would you use a site like that um, I think there's really two main things you're looking to do with those sites. Uh, the first one is, much like we have talked about with Limited, you can actually lay out your curve and visually see kind of how your deck's going to progress through the turns of the game. If you notice that when you've built it, you have like a bunch of six and seven drops, that may not be so helpful. So you might have to start thinking about cutting something from the high end, moving in some cheaper cards. Uh, the other real big thing I think that helps is counting your, your sources, your different colors of mana and making sure you have the right mana base or you know, the right combination of lands to kind of get you where you need to go. Because oftentimes doing that on paper or in your head is not as helpful as laying, actually laying it out in front of you. Um, what are your minimum requirements for you know, satisfying your, your mana, particularly in different colors? Um, ideally, if you have main colors you want to play on turn two, you really want to try to get at minimum 13 or 14 sources of that color, preferably even more for like two drops. Uh -huh. um, but if you have basically any color in your deck, even if it's just sort of a light splash, in Constructed, I think you want to have at minimum, minimum about nine or ten sources of that. Because in Limited, if you don't have your splash color, you know, you wait a couple turns, not a big deal. Constructed, you get cards trapped in your hand. It's a big, pretty big problem. Cool, cool. Um, how about um, EDH or Commander decks? I know there's a site EDH Rec that a lot of people like to use. Yeah, EDH is actually one of the best um, formats in terms of using the internet to help you. Because with EDH, if you have a particular commander that you really want to build around, you can actually just go online and see what are some other decks people have put together that have that commander. Now, you may not want to copy their deck exactly. To me, that's a little boring. It kind of defeats the purpose of commander, which it should be to have fun and play the cards you want. Yeah. But, you know, if uh, there's particular interactions, like two-card combos or you know, like uh, ways to like get your commander to win the game immediately, which there are some, depending on your commander. Yeah, it's cool to go to some of those sites um, to see what other commander decks have been built around that card and just see what other people are doing with it. I guess you could also look at uh, commanders in the same color and similar costs and maybe see what cards they're using as well. Yeah, you can see which cards tend to be staples across commander decks. Um, in those colors, because there's definitely certain cards that 
you know, are just sort of staple cards that are always going to be, you know, in your blue-black deck, you're typically going to have, like, the card counterspell a lot of the time or things of that nature. So it is good to kind of get that info, especially if you're newer to the format. So, yeah, I think that absolutely works. Awesome. That's been our guide on how to build your perfect deck using the internet. Arie, thank you very much, as always. My pleasure. And if you've enjoyed this video, please feel free to subscribe to our channel down below, and you'll be seeing more from us in the near future. Thank you for joining us on Nights at the Game Table.